Hey guys, it's Matt here. I recently did a video talking about uh, On the Way to a Smile, a Final Fantasy VII book that took place after the events of the main game. So I wanted to give you guys another book review on Final Fantasy VII, The Kids Are Alright, a Turk side story. The Kids Are Alright follows the story of Evan Townshend. I believe this is him on the cover. Now Evan became orphaned at 17 during the plate fall when he lost track or he could not find his mother during all the madness. Two years later, kind of like around before the beginning of Advent Children, he's now 19 and he works for an agency called Muriel's Investigative Services. Now what's funny about this book is if you ever played Final Fantasy VII Remake, or if you've not gotten around to it or you played Integrate, whatever, there's some original characters in that game that we had not heard of before from the main game or the compilation, and this book actually was their first appearance, characters like Leslie and Kirie, and also Muriel, which is Kirie's grandmother, who the detective agency is actually named after. When it comes to like a little breakdown of these characters, Muriel is in the game and she's kind of like a homeless woman that works for the Angel of the Slums and periodically she'll give Cloud and the party side quests to do while they're roaming around Midgar. So Kirie is in the book too and she's the granddaughter of Muriel and she works at the detective agency with Evan and is a close friend of him. She is that, you know, that little girl who's dressed up like Britney Spears with her little striped leggings on with the high high pitched screechy voice that you just can't stand and she's talking after the plate falls in the sector about how Avalanche corrupted everybody. And finally, in terms of characters that you see in Remake, but also made their first appearance in this book, is Leslie. Now, if you don't know who Leslie is, he's in Final Fantasy VII Remake, acting as the doorman or henchman for Don Corneo. And you actually interact with him in the wall market scenario, when Cloud needs to complete his disguise and wear the iconic dress. And he helps the party also later on in the game get through the sewers and launch onto the plate with grappling hooks so that they can get to the Shinra building and rescue Aerith. He's also in this book as, you know, a partner or a friend of Evans. All right, so I kind of got off track, but as for the plot, so there's this de detective agency, right? There's this detective agency and Evan is a part of it, Kirie is a part of it, Leslie is a part of it, and then one of Evan's friends, Fabio, is also a part of it. And they get uh, tasked with a private detective mission of tracking down a soldier second class, like an ex-soldier second class, named Gold Ard. Now Evan being a part of this, he gets in on this mission to track down this soldier second class, but at the same time he's wondering to himself where his mother has gone because she hasn't been confirmed dead after the plate fall when she went missing. So while he's searching for this soldier, he's actually looking for his mom too and trying to track her down. And while this is all happening, this mission of tracking the soldier, looking for his mother, he's also running into the Turks quite a bit. So if you saw my last video about Final Fantasy VII on the way to a smile, uh, I really liked that book. I thought that book was really cool because it focused on Cloud and the gang and this arduous journey that they have to experience and deal with once, you know, Mako reactors are gone and stuff and things are just not hunky-dory after they defeat Sephiroth in the main game. So I don't want to spoil the book, but like honestly this book focuses mostly on Evan and his journey with Kyrie and Leslie and all them and stuff like that. And Cloud and Tifa are going to make very minuscule minor appearances in this book. I mean, they get to meet and talk and have coffee at 7th Heaven, which is kind of cool, like the new 7th Heaven in the Town of Edge that you've probably seen in uh, Advent Children. But it focuses on Evan, and because of this, because it, it focuses on all these new characters, I kind of had to remind myself numerous times while reading this book that it's like, whoa, actually, this is an FF7 book. It's not just some book about people. This is an FF7 book. Like, don't forget that. And so I felt like I was kind of detached from the world and the characters. And there's like a big climactic kind of crazy part at the end, but a lot of it like didn't really tie in for me or do it for me. It, it wasn't very impactful. So I'd say like you could probably give this book a chance, like if you're a huge FF7 fan and you're just foaming at the mouth for any sort of information or any extra lore on the game like we've been doing for Remake, you could definitely give this book a chance. It's only $15 on Amazon, so I'd recommend you give it a chance. But if you're not a hardcore Final Fantasy VII fan, I'd say you could definitely skip the book because it, it probably won't appeal to you too much. I mean, even I had qualms with it at times compared to something like On the Way to a Smile. Without going too in-depth about what actually happens in the book and what happens in the story, that'll conclude my video review of this book. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was insightful and was able to help you. Thanks a lot for watching my video. Please like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter any way you can support. I would greatly appreciate it and have a great day. Bye-bye.